All right, guys, so we'll be back right here. Keep watching QED TV. It was an experience. It was something I experienced, and um, um, I felt that um, it's something we need to share with the world. Um, it's not something that a writer can just sit and imagine, because there's so many elements that you. I mean, did you see the film? Yeah. I'm sure you know. Will you ever sit and imagine that a plane flies over a place, you know, all the time, and someone now? notes all the plane that flies you know so these are details that you must experience it as a matter of fact at first that was meant to chase us away but the writer and i now decided that look we can put it to use nobody has ever done that before so let's write this air traffic into the script you know so and a lot of all that freedom thing i was in the mechanic workshop one day and they were doing freedom that was where that um you know inspiration came and the natural way that they relate, you know, they are buka there. So sometimes I will sit among them to eat with them and I see how they talk. So these are things that informed, um, yeah. Okay, so the movies that are made by you, that are produced by you, they carry a distinct touch about storytelling and everything. Do you feel like Nollywood should evolve towards a set of telling actual reality stories? No, look, it, it can't be that. Life is, uh, you know, it has to be spicy. Everybody have different. Some people just like to do comedy films. People go in, they laugh, they are out, they enjoy their money, it's gone. Some people like films that will stand the test of time. When you see it today, you still remember it in 20 years. Some people just want to do documentary. Some people just want to document histories. You know, but for me, I want to do things that are arty, but at the same time, entertaining. Um, and these are the elements you will see in a lot of my works. Are you planning to make any more movies that are language-based, specifically? Uh, absolutely. I've, all, I've been trying to work on a film in Egu language for a very long time, and I'm still working on it. Um, I'm going to do um, uh, Igbo films, Aousa films. We did a film recently that is heavy on Fulani and Aousa. They are actually two different people. You know, and um, we're working on a lot of, we're working on a TV series, Odru. It's pure, it's set in 16th century Yoruba, or your empire, and it's going to be purely in Yoruba. Sir, so, okay. sir, all right, so what was the motive behind bringing the veterans back into this world? No, it's just to keep them running. It's just to give them life. Uh, because they don't have retirement, and, um, you know, things like this, you have to, uh, when they're on set, they're excited. And I like to, I like to leave that mark. Because, I mean, are these, these are things they're going to take away, you know, when they are gone. So do you think, do you think Nigerian parents need to bring, go into the uh, act of getting their kids to do and work than going to school? No, no, no. They can go to school, but once they have free time, they should engage them in vocational work. You know, because a, a lot of our, my, my, some of my friends were always joking to say, look, our, our children are prisoners. Because, you know, when you go to work and they get back, they are inside. During our time, we'll go to the streets. You go to neighbor. You know, you, you run around the, the streets. But they can't because we're so scared of the society. So if you then engage them in other things, my, my daughter goes to learn tailor, tailoring. My son goes to learn mechanic, even at age eight. It doesn't, and they're very brilliant. So it does not affect you know, the academy, they're just going to acquire more skills and they can decide what they want to be in the future, but it's just additional, um, you know, skills for them. That's it.